Hey, this is Paul. Hope you guys can hear me. I got the headset on. I'm coming around the corner to the co-ed butcher's house. I have to give a little description now before I get there because they're really weird in this neighborhood. They just want their privacy and they don't like looky loose. So what he'd do is he would grab a hitchhiker, pick up a hitchhiker, and then he would take her to the woods somewhere and he'd strangle her. He did that to like three victims. And he'd actually uh, drive back to his house around this bend here. And he would park in the driveway and his mother would take a sleeping pill at night. And sometimes he'd put extra pills in her drink or whatever. And so she'd sleep all night. And so he'd have all night to do his macabre and dirty deeds. And he would actually have a victim in the trunk and he would park the car, like I said, in the driveway and smuggle the victim into the house. And he had his own sh bathroom in his room, attached to his room. So he would chop the head and the torso. He, he'd actually chop up the body and have sex with the torso. He was a sick fuck and he killed his mother and he killed her best friend in this house in the end. He actually took like five, he killed 10 people all together. Here's the, here's the unit. It looks almost the same as it did back in the day. Uh, it's to the right, the bottom unit right here. That's just, I, t I said earlier, it's non-descriptive. It doesn't like a scary looking place, but horrors went on in this house without a doubt. He'd park right here in these, uh, he'd park right, right here. There's a actual documentary called, uh, it's called uh, Born to Kill, and they do a segment on, on him. And it actually, the sheriff is at this very location talking. So if you need a reference, you can watch that. I had a bunch of notes, but I forgot my notes. So, but he would go into this unit here and he did unspeakable acts. He actually buried some of the, a couple like hands and some feet and all this stuff that he got like over the, over the year of killing all the, uh, well, trophy stuff. He would get like uh, little purses and keys and IDs, and he buried a lot of that in the backyard. When the sheriffs uh, dug up the backyard, they found a treasure trove of like souvenirs that he buried and some hands. And he he's a sick fuck, dude. He, sorry about the cussing. He was a sick bastard. He uh, he had sex with the headless uh, with the headless co uh, corpse. You know, yeah, to his mom he violated her in all ways possible he was really that's what made him stand out because back then this is the beginning of the serial killer age this was his reign of terror i think was 72 to 73 but he killed his grandparents at age eight and then about five six years later he was they said he was restored to sanity and that he was okay he was a genius and he also worked in the psych department and he was able to get into the uh, he knew all about what they're looking for the answers to the questions to bring him, you know, that it would evaluate and decide whether or not he was sane. He knew all the, you know, he had a brilliant IQ anyways. He manipulated his way, and when they released him, they released him to his mom's house, and she worked at UCSC, and this is the house where, she, where he lived with her. And this is where he did most of his rampaging, picking up college co-eds, and, uh, you know, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't bring my notes, but this is definitely the house, and really evil things went on in the unit to the right. Okay, thank you for, uh, for listening. This is Paul, out.